Hello traders, how are you guys doing? Welcome to Technicals with Capital FX. Just a quick recap from last week, we took pretty good trades. We had trades on the Euro USD and the GBP USD and we grabbed a lot of pips uh, last week. We had a massive fall off of price on the uh, on the Euro dollar and on the GBP USD and we could expect some more movement in this week. So let's get right into it guys. So this is Forex Factory. And uh, this is an aspect where a lot of traders really neglect, uh, they don't really check any fundamentals uh, in the markets. And I think it's really important that you know uh, any fundamentals that could potentially pop up, which have a great impact on our price action. So this is today. So obviously there's no news event. Uh, Monday, which is tomorrow, uh, if we're in South Africa. So this is tomorrow. Uh, there's not much news. There's only one announcement. Uh, if you're trading the New Zealand dollar, expect any uh, price movements around 12.45. But in general, uh, it's a fairly quiet day on Monday. And then Tuesday, it's also a fairly quiet day. Just a couple of news events there at 4 p.m. Moderate news events. So... Uh, We'll see how that does affect price. And also one thing to note, guys, we're already in the month of August, slowly getting into September, and we're slowly closing off the year. So you, uh, we're going to have a lot of bank holidays, a lot of holidays in the market, and it's also uh, approaching holiday season for like a lot of countries around the world. So uh, do you expect markets to be a bit slow, but also giving us clearer uh, direction as compared to the beginning of COVID in March? So on Tuesday, nothing much happening just except for these two moderate news events at 4 p.m. and half of 7. On Wednesday, also not that busy, but also we just have a couple of moderate news events at 3 a.m. Uh, half past 3 a.m., the Aussie dollar. And then half past 2 to half past 4, the U.S. dollar news. Uh... Uh, this will be very crucial for us uh, to note and I'll explain when we discuss the market breakdown. So jumping into Thursday, then we're starting to have a little bit of um, news releases, um, high impact news releases. Uh, and then we have one at uh, 10 past three, the Fed Chair Powell speaks and it's a high impact um, announcement. So this one will definitely um, play a key role, especially looking at um, how the pound is performing and how the euro USD is performing against the dollar. So we might see aggressive moves, potentially more downside movement on the euro USD and GP USD, and uh, an increase uh, in the uh, in the US uh, in the USD JPY and USD CAD and then we also have CAD news at quarter past five that day so generally we should be expecting really explosive moves during this day on Thursday and then Friday just to close off the week uh, we've got a couple of moderate news events uh, we've got chef news at 9 a.m. then we've got CAD news at 2 30 also coupled with USD news but one to really check out for is pound news at um, five minutes past three and then in general uh, this is a day where we should be looking at uh, at our charts so guys jumping right into it uh, first of all on our charts we'll be looking at the US dollar index so it's really important guys that you you follow the US dollar index because many pairs around the world are paid against the US dollar so it'll only make sense for us to look at the US dollar to gauge its strength its weakness relative to the other pairs in the forex market let me just remove this ad okay so just go on the weekly uh, just to get a big overview of the us dollar index how it's been performing so from the 9th of march all the way to the current date price has been falling off a cliff and the dollar has weakened greatly obviously due also to the coronavirus situation that's been happening globally which has affected a lot of business but uh, it's good for us because uh, if we know how to study price action we can take those opportunities so firstly on the weekly uh, this is how last week ended uh, it ended off on a nice weekly hammer candle here 
having had one, two, two weeks of price rejection. So I'm going to go to daily time frame now. Daily time frame, uh, it looks much better here. We sort of got an area of support around that region up here. So we had that first rejection. Second rejection had a nice steep information, but price failed to go above that region and then price fell again um, on that area of support. And then we had a bullish engulfing pushing up price here around that region, breaking uh, the previous day's high and then closing above. And then Thursday, we sort of had a pullback shooting star and then Friday closed quite bearish, uh, uh, sorry, closed quite bullish. So we sort of stuck in this zone right now uh, on the dollar index. We're stuck in this zone here. And then um, what we're really waiting for, for us to be comfortable with the directional bias of this pay is when price breaks this zone, breaks this zone up here, breaks this zone and then potentially comes back to retest it to give us that confirmation that price will definitely be shooting upwards. So uh, those are one of the things to consider. Yeah, another aspect to consider uh, if price doesn't break above here, price can retest that as resistance and sort of come back here before price rallies upwards and gives us a clear direction. But by the looks of things, um, uh, in America, uh, things will slowly pick up. And also, we've got the elections in, in November, which will definitely have a big impact on the US dollar. So, but now, uh, judging from this current price structure here, uh, we also have a descending trend line here. Let me just extend it all the way. So, we've got this outer trend line, and then also got an inner trend line. Drawing from here to here as well. So we're going to inner trend line. So possibly things to look out for in the dollar index is for price to break this range where we've been stuck since the uh, since 30th of July. So we've been stuck in a sort of a range. So it's for price up to see what it does when it gets to the region. So my thinking, uh, I'm just based on price action is for price to bounce here, come back and test this as support, and then for price to shoot up and to clear the board and break above this outer trend line here to give us that sense of direction for price to go upwards. So that's the US index. And you know, guys, that um, with US index, uh, it's negatively correlated to EURUSD and GPUSD. So if we have upside movement in the index, we should expect the opposite in both EURUSD and GBPUSD. So uh, let's just drop down to the four hours uh, to see if we can gather any information that can help us to take our trades. So in the four hours, um, what we had last week was a nice swing low, swing high, and then price sort of pull back, uh, giving us a nice fib retracement. Uh, giving us a nice fib retracement. I'll pull this up here. Fib retracement. Retrace right on the 50. And then uh, we could be expecting for price to move even slightly higher because uh, we cleared out our previous swing high there. So we could expect price to even rally upwards on this one. So my bias for the US index is for price to, firstly, I'll be comfortable if price would break above this consolidation area and rebound here as support for it to shoot upwards and then also going upwards, which will give me a sense of direction on the other pairs that I'll be looking at. So now jumping into the first one that we're looking at um, is going to be the Euro USD. Okay, guys, uh, this is your USD. Uh, this was last week, guys. Uh, we had a nice rally downwards and then price pullback. So uh, let's just go on the daily and then we do our top down analysis from the daily time frame. We should just go on the weekly time frame. We'll start from there. So, guys, you can see on the weekly, sorry, as you can see on the weekly. Uh, we had a big rejection off of our key level of 1.2000. We had one 
to three weeks of rejection and then price was failing to go beyond that region telling us that there's a weakness in price around this region here and then last week closed as a massive shooting star candle so which tells us that to to expect um, further downward momentum so uh, if the US index is going to be going up we should be expecting a lot of downward movement on the euro dollar so let me drop down to the daily so daily uh, this is how Friday closed it closed as a big bearish candle and then also uh, on Wednesday we had a big engulfing then Tuesday was that region here so we had a big uh, bearish engulfing candlestick formation here we sort of had a pullback around about that region and then price was rallying all the way downwards so now what to expect this coming week so we have a liquidity area so uh, we've basically got uh, an area of liquidity um, this is area of liquidity here and we could expect price to retrace within this region here so basically our uh, areas of liquidity is where price normally retraces before the next big move will happen so let me just drop down to the four hours so on the four hours it's much more clearer we had a nice swing high then we had a swing low and then we had a nice pullback around that region and then price collapsed all the way so now what to expect um is a pullback since we've already uh identified our overall trend from the daily we can just continue with that bias on the four hours what to expect really guys is a pullback within this range up here before we can take any short trades so we're not really rushing uh, uh into these trades we're always waiting for the market to come to us for it to give us a signs and then we'll take trades based off of those signs so what i'm waiting for personally is a pullback into that region up here and also we can also um, use our fib for us to confirm um the exact area where it'll pull back so based of our fib we can expect price to pull back right into the 61.8 or between the 61.8 and the 78.6 to have a closure there and then we can be in a position to take any short trades so basically guys we'll be waiting for any bearish signs uh along the 1.18342 region and the 1.8558 region waiting for any bearish signs there for us to take this trade uh to actually take a sell trade on this so in terms of like targets uh we could expect price to definitely come on our first area of target which also coincides with our previous lows here which coincides with our previous lows which makes it a really strong area for our targets so that can be a nice area of target first target and then second target but in terms of like pips the first target is about 114 pips which is really good and in terms of stops uh we can only be in a position to place our stops once we know what happens with price action around this region but we really like to use really tight stop losses always remember guys to risk one to two percent of your account per trade so that you can trade your account over time and to grow it gradually so that's euro uh usd let me just drop to the two hours see if we can get any further signs to help us take trades or possible trades in the coming week so guys you can see on the two hours we sort of had uh price turning around that region and we're sort of building momentum going upwards and also had a bearish and uh, we had a bullish engulfing sorry at this region here and also just applying simple price action rules guys um for example this area here this was a previous area of support oops this is a previous area of support which can potentially become a resistance for price um if price from that region shoots up and bounces off of this as resistance will definitely be looking at taking any short trades from that region and then we can have our first target using our fib we can use uh, we can use our fib for the first target and then but long term we can also um have 
more trades or we can actually hold this trade for much longer but it's also important for us to define um, our first area of target so that we can build that confidence guys and to build our accounts so that's euro usd guys and then i'm going to go to the pound dollar guys i want them to note uh, it's important that you understand uh, pair correlation so always remember guys that the gbp usd is negatively correlated up to the euro gbp so it's important that you always follow um, how the euro gbp moves in conjunction with the pound dollar so the market has just recently opened you can see there's really a gap in the market already uh so this is gpsd let me just go to the weekly charts again so similar to year usd we had like a massive rejection uh at 13250 closing off with a nice shooting star also we had one two three four four weeks of rejection at that area here telling us that price is failing to break above and um buyers are slowly getting off the market and then sellers are taking control of the market right now so this is a good sign for us to take um, short trades. Also, remember guys with the US index, if the US index is gonna push upwards, we could expect a lot of bearish movement in this pair here. So from the weekly, we jump on to the daily. So the daily uh, is really choppy, really, uh, this area here. Really, really choppy, guys. But we can um, filter through the noise and to get um, a sense of direction here. So firstly, we had a big bearish Marubazu right there, and then we had a, a massive pullback all the way up on Thursday, and then Friday had a rejection on the 32.50, and then price pulled all the way backwards. So with this one, we can't really um, analyze and sort of like get a sense of direction. So we'll go down to the four hours, which will be much clearer for us. So four hours is much, much clearer, guys. You can see we had a double pot uh, uh we had a double top here also similar to the euro usd we could expect a pullback a pullback we expect a pullback before price moves downwards so let me go to the two hours i think it's much better for us on the two hours okay so now what you can notice we're currently sitting on a area of support Air support here so for us to continue going downwards we need to first pull back before we break that region here so the two things that can happen right now on this pair is for us to have sort of like a pullback um, have a pullback and then price from where it pulls back to drop lower but this one is a definite target that I have my eyes on 1.3 thousand which is our monthly support area and then the second thing that can happen from where price is now one thing that can happen from here is price can okay, let me just bring this back so price can break that region come retest it come retest it as a resistance and then from there we can we can be in a position to take uh we can be, uh, can be in a position to take short trades from here and then this would be like a really nice suitable target um let me just bring this in that could be like a nice suitable target for us at 1300 and then also expect it to go much lower so the best thing for gpsd is to wait and see how the market opens and the kind of moves it gives us and then we'll be We'll be in a position to take our trades and then last one we'll look at euro gbp as at uh, as it affects gbp usd as well so let's go on the weekly time frame so the weekly time frame we've had a couple of rejections uh around about the 0 0.9000 region uh, which is a very good round number so we had rejections from 20th of July, rejection there, rejection there, rejection there, rejection there. And then last week we had a hammer candle rejecting that region up here, rejecting that region. 
so and also price has been slowly gradually moving upwards here so for us to know that this is an indeed an uptrend is for price to break this zone here and to go upwards even higher so if price does indeed break and go above like that we can expect a really massive drop in gbp usd so let me jump on to the daily so this is a daily time frame guys so in the daily time frame we also have this area of support here got this area of support which were uh, which started on the 20, uh, 10th of july and then sort of price came back there again so if price uh if price breaks this region we could expect a, a bounce here and then for price to go downwards so if the euro gbp drops it'll push up the pound dollar and uh, the negative will also be true so but currently as things stand uh, based off the weekly we're currently in an uptrend but for me to gain comfort based off of the daily time frame this being the most recent swing high which has been around for like a while and also stuck in sort of like a consolidation phase here we're stuck in a consolidation phase here so what will give me comfort is for price to break above here to rebound and shoot upwards but for me this is really like the area where i'm looking at long term for price to break to go above but if it does if it breaks above here we could expect a really massive move on gpusd falling so but at the moment we're sort of stuck in a consolidation and price has been moving up and down guys not really clear movements on this one so but i'm really expecting to see white price does um monday uh, uh on monday which is tomorrow and then but from seeing how price looks now we're sort of in a zone so we could have maybe like a slight pullback and then price could come here interesting to see what price does here but what i'm waiting for or what i'm expecting rather is for price to break above to come retest this as support and then for price to shoot upwards which will push down the pound dollar all right guys thank you so much guys i hope uh this trading week will be a very fruitful and a productive one and i'll be updating the group with any possible trades for us to take thank you so much guys